uh, sometimes we use the quadratic formula because we can't factor something. Sometimes um, if you're asked to on the SAT, people are sometimes confused about the solutions they get back. Uh, I want to do an example now where the answer that we're going to get back satisfies something that looks like this, I think. Um, but just let this be the x-axis if you don't if you don't mind. And we're going to come up with a an equation that does this actually comes down and it touches the x-axis once and it goes back up. Um, and I think it does this. Well, who cares what it does? Let this be the x-axis. And I want to show you one where it just touches exactly one time. And then we're going to talk in our next video about how to use something called the discriminant to figure that out. But here's the equation. What I want to know is when is x squared plus 10x plus 25 equal to 0? So here's what we're going to use. Now this is factorable, and I, hopefully you guys can factor this out, and you know that the answer is actually x plus 5 times x plus 5 are the factors, right? Uh, and x plus 5 times x plus 5, of course, is x plus 5 squared, right? If, if 10 times 10 is 10 squared, and... 3 times 3 is 3 squared, then x plus 5 times x plus 5 is certainly x plus 5 squared, isn't it? Okay, so our answer, we should only get one solution here, and that is x equals negative 5. But let's prove that the quadratic formula will give you the same answer. Start off with the quadratic formula, and it says that x, the x value here, this x value here, is equal to the opposite of b, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, whole thing, over 2a. When you're doing this, let me say this. This is what will really help you. The first thing you do is build a list. I tell my calculus students the same thing. Always build a list. So we know that ax squared plus bx plus c is the standard form of a quadratic equation. So the a value is a number in front of x squared. And you don't see a number there, so you assume that it's a 1, right? So I'm going to say a is equal to 1. b is the number that's in front of x, and that is 10. So b equals 10. C is the number that has seems to have no x value attached to it. So that gives us C equals 25. Okay, now I'm going to use this famous theorem I use, which is called FITBA, which is fill in the blanks. Fill in the blanks. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to say x is equal to the opposite of b. Well, b happens to be positive 10 here, so it's negative 10, isn't it? Then it says plus or minus, so plus or minus square root b is 10, 10 squared is 100, isn't it, right, minus 4ac, we went back, we already did this, see how this list building really helped us, a is 1, c is 25, right, all over 2, to a, right, to a, but a is 1, so 2 times 1 is just 2, isn't it, Okay, this is where this, sorry, this is where this gets really easy in this case because it's going to prove this out to us. And it, we're just going to do this math. Well, negative 4 times 1 is negative 4, and negative 4 times positive 25 is negative 100. Is that okay? So I'm going to take this out, and I'm going to replace it, just simplify it here. And we get negative 100, negative 100. So let's do a little bit more math, simplify it a little bit more. So we have negative 10 plus or minus, well, 100 minus 100 is, oh, that's 0 is 0, is 0. And the square root of 0 is well, 0 over 2. So usually I would be telling you, first do 10, negative 10 plus that number and solve it, and then do negative 10, right? Minus is two problems, right? Turn into two different problems there. Minus this number divided by 2. But negative 10 plus or minus, doesn't matter which way I do it, 0 is still negative 10. So the answer is negative 10 over 2, and voila, here we have x is equal to negative 5. The only way I could make this answer, whoa, this answer look more like this answer is to do this. So I'll do it. Right? x is negative 5, x is negative 5 is our solution, and that would make this the point. Whoa, hello, hello. That would make this the point negative 5, 0, right? Negative 5, 0. Couldn't be happier with you.
Hope you hope you have this figured out. I, I said it before. You just got to practice this a bunch of times. It's going to get really easy, and you're going to use it a ton. You're going to use it on the SAT a bunch. You're going to use it in other high school math. You're going to use it in calculus, and believe it or not, you're going to use it all the way through college. So it's one of those things that actually it's a, it's a really great tool to have. When you, when you can't figure something out, you can just drop it into that, and it just works. So it's terrific. So good job.